Today, we're going to be talking about how Ubuntu is getting more and more rusty, meaning they keep adding more and more Rust-based packages and utilities into their popular distribution and shipping with the language as a default. This all started around February with an announcement of engineering Ubuntu for the next 20 years, a discourse post on their forum, which was created by the VP of engineering at Canonical. And this here is our first glimpse at what Ubuntu plans on trying to do over the next 20 years and how Rust plays a role in that. And why I'm bringing this up is because there's been two big announcements in the last week or so about Ubuntu moving their GNU core utilities over to the Rust equivalent. And not only that, they are also moving sudo, which is a command that helps you escalate privileges in Linux also over to the Rust equivalent. Big changes are happening here in Ubuntu. Let's first check out the forward 20 years as we're interested in the couple places where Rust is actually mentioned in this post. Under the modernization category, the world of computing has evolved dramatically in the last 20 years, and I'm proud that Ubuntu is continually adapted and thrived. In Linux alone, there have been huge changes to what is considered normal for a Linux machine, whether it be the introduction of System D, the advent of languages with a focus on memory safety, the huge growth in virtualization and the containerization technology, or even the introduction of Rust into the Linux kernel itself, the foundations of our distribution must be constantly assessed against the needs of our users. And although it was subtle in this paragraph, we do have the mention of introduction to Rust and specifically the kernel, just highlighting the context of change in the Linux world, which doesn't necessarily mean anything. But the next mention of Rust is here, where we say some of my personal favorites include command line utilities, such as EZA, BAT, Helix, and the new Ghosty terminal emulator, and more, Foundational projects such as U-Utilities and the rewrite of core utilities in Rust. Each of these projects are varying levels of maturity, but have demonstrated a vision more modern Unix-like experience that emphasizes resilience, performance, and usability. So again, while not really predicting what will happen in the future, this does set the tone as the VP of Engineering keeps bringing up more modern tools, a more modern language, and a heavy emphasis on modernization. So that all led into some questioning from the community. While this is looking forward, it was very vague. But about a month later, we get a clarification from the VP of engineering called carefully but purposefully oxidizing Ubuntu. So this really starts to set the tone and explanation for what Ubuntu is going to be doing in the future to make things rusty. As it starts with last month, I published engineering Ubuntu for the next 20 years, which outlines the four key themes for how I intend to evolve Ubuntu in the coming years. In this post, I'll focus on modernization, there are many areas we could look to modernize in Ubuntu. We could focus on graphical shell experience, the virtualization stack, core system utilities, default shell utilities, etc. Over the years, projects like the GNU core utilities have been instrumental in shaping the Unix-like experience that Ubuntu and other distributions ship to millions of users. According to the GNU website, the GNU core utilities are the basic file, shell, and text manipulation utilities of the GNU operating system. These are the core utilities which are expected to exist on every operating system, and a lot of us understand what these core utilities are, but starting with Ubuntu 25.10, my goal is to adopt some of the modern implementation as the default. My immediate goal is to make U-Utilities, Core Utilities implementation, the default in Ubuntu 25.10, and subsequently, in our next long-term support, release Ubuntu 26.04 LTS, if the conditions are right. That is a big deal. The Vice President here of Engineering plans to modernize its foundations to Ubuntu by adopting Rust-based replacements for core functions like the Linux Core Utilities. The goal here is to make these defaults in Ubuntu 25.10, which we do have news on now, and we're gonna get to, but why would Ubuntu do such a thing? Well, we have a section to read here called, but why? But before we do, make sure to go subscribe below for more videos like this in the future. YouTube can get finicky. Also make sure to smash that like button on the way back up. Let's talk about why. Performance is a frequently cited rationale for rewrited in Rust projects. While performance is high on my list of priorities, it's not the primary driver behind this change. These utilities are at the heart of the distribution and it's enhanced resilience and safety that is more easily achieved with Rust ports that are the most attractive to me. The Rust language, its type system, and borrow checker, and its community work together to encourage developers to write safe, sound, resilient software. With added safety comes an increase in security guarantees, and with an increase in security comes an increase in overall resilience of the system. And where better to start than the foundational tools that build the distribution, which is 
quite wild. Ubuntu powers millions of devices around the world, from servers to your data center to safety critical systems and autonomous systems. So it behooves us to be absolutely certain we're shipping the most resilient and trustworthy software we can. And he ends this with, that's not to throw shade on any existing implementations. Of course, many of these tools have been stable for many years, quietly improving performance and fixing bugs. A lovely benefit of working in newer implementations is that sometimes facilitates improvements in the original upstream projects too. I've written about my desire to increase the number of Ubuntu contributors, and I think projects like this will help. Rust may present a steeper learning curve than C in some ways, but by providing such a strong framework around the use of memory, it also lowers the chances that a contributor accidentally commits potentially unsafe code. And this is quite the vision, and it will have Linux-wide impact. Clearly, Ubuntu's leadership wants to modernize the very foundations of the distribution by replacing the C-based core utilities. Think things like list, copy, move, sudo, all the fun stuff that exist in new utilities and core utilities. And the reasoning here seems to be safety and resilience, trust and contributor growth or community growth. In short, the vision here is to oxidize Ubuntu's foundations with Rust. And now this is a bold long-term shift. Ubuntu is positioning itself to having more and more Rust. And this significant adoption of Rust could force or move other Linux distributions to do the same. As not only is it influential in the decisions that they make, but a lot of distributions are based on Ubuntu. So whether or not they want to make that change, they will almost certainly be forced to make the change. As it's probably the most widely used Linux distribution on desktops and one of the most popular when it comes to servers. So this makes it a big deal in the Linux world. So now that this was posted back in March, where have we made it? Have there been updates? And has the team been successful in oxidizing or making Ubuntu rusty? Well, this is brand new news here. Posted September 4th, Rust Core Utilities transition landing in release pocket. And this is a big deal because it's actually moving the talk into reality. With this announcement, this means that Rust Core Utilities is landing in the release pocket, meaning that no longer just experimental or proposed, but part of the default Ubuntu images. Images have now been rebuilt with Rust Core Utilities. Every Ubuntu build and or test image will now rely on the Rust implementation of list, copy, move, all the fundamental GNU core utilities have been replaced. Auto packages are also impacted. All packages that test and assume GNU core utilities will now run against Rust core utility. And also there's hardened behavior. And this is all very interesting as this is quite the announcement from the team at Canonical. We're moving from vision to production at this point. March's blog was a roadmap and these September changes are going to affect a lot of people as it's gonna have a wide ripple effect. If it fails, Canonical will backtrack, but as these Rust Core utilities in 25.10, it shows a deep confidence that the Rust Core utilities are ready for the mainstream. Ubuntu is becoming a trend center, so this is quite the announcement. But it isn't the only announcement that we've received from Ubuntu on Rust this week. Before we get to that, if you'd like to level up your Linux experience today, check out my checklist, cheat sheet, and mind map, all available at SavvyNick.com. Get those today. And here is the official core utilities package getting merged in to Ubuntu for 25.10. Basically, this patch here prevents tricking Rust core utilities into running the wrong command under the wrong name, making Ubuntu's Rust transition more real. And finally, this week, we also saw sudo rs becoming the default for Ubuntu as well. As of Ubuntu 25.10, questing Quokka, daily images are now using sudo RS or the Rust implementation of sudo to elevate your privileges, which has been using the long-standing C implementation called sudo.ws. This also shows another leap towards using Rust in the Ubuntu Linux distribution. And of course, this is all showing up before 26.04, the long-term support edition. As this is all really a trial run for the next big long-term support release, Ubuntu's model goes every two years canonical ships long-term support release on even years with up to 10 years of support. So stability is paramount here. Interim releases like 25.10, these are the proving grounds. Canonical tries the changes here knowing they can refine and revert before that long-term support freeze. The fact that the core utilities and pseudo RS are both being switched now in 25.10 suggests that they're fairly confident this will work and they want daily users and testers to provide feedback. We can expect by April 2026 that Canonical will implement Rust for both core utilities and sudo 
And overall, this will affect Linux, including downstream distributions, and tens of millions of machines will now run the Rust equivalent of the core utilities. And this is going to become a wider proof for the Linux community as proof that Rust rewrites can be used in production level workloads, that they are that stable at this point. And Ubuntu has been banking on Rust for a while, even introducing guidelines on how to develop with Rust for Ubuntu developers, as this documentation has now been included in the official Ubuntu for developers platform. So it really feels like they're pushing forwards with Ubuntu, which all sounds great as moving from the GNU core utilities and sudo into Rust is exciting, but there are real risks. One obvious one is compatibility breakage. If even the tiniest difference occurs between codes, it's going to cause breaking pipelines and tools. The GNU core utilities have had decades and decades of testing, and the Rust implementations are much younger and could miss corner cases. Also, the performance gap. GNU core utilities is written with a highly optimized C and with decades of micro optimizations. Rust can match C, but not all utilities are optimized. Heavy operations, including sorting, copying, large file operations may even run slower. Although the benchmarks seem to be on par for most utilities. Also, another big one is licensing. The GNU core utilities use the GPL v3, which has a strong copy left license and Rust, including the U utilities and core utilities is an MIT or Apache 2.0 permissive license. While this makes redistribution easier in some cases, the free software community may see it as undermining the GNU's copyleft protections. This, of course, can produce some fragmentation as Ubuntu ships Rust core utilities, but Debian, Fedora, and other RHEL stick to GNU, admins will face subtle incompatibilities between distributions. In summary here, we do have upsides, including hopefully boosting security and introducing new contributors, but there are risks as well with breaking legacy scripts, performance regression, and license. It's very interesting to see this move by Ubuntu trying to oxidize its own Linux distribution. Let me know what you think about this in the comments section below. Will this change how you end up using Ubuntu? Do you welcome this change? I'd like to hear from you. Also, don't forget to subscribe below and smash that like button on the way back up. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.